bangiji wo lo to si iwo la wa bojule I think in, in terms of his influencing artists and people, his main thing was that you honor tradition, but you also honor the new. And so, especially in Nigeria, with the young artists there of all disciplines, it was about honoring and taking elements from the traditional past and putting them together with elements of modernity and uh, new technology and uh, new musical instruments and things. When he was involved with John Coltrane, it was like John Coltrane had an epiphany and it changed his life about the way he looked at his culture, about the way he looked at, uh, you know, the American treatment of, of black folks and of his music and creativity in general. I mean, it, it changed every level of his being. African music, like African life, is changing. We've had a mingling of two cultures, and each has much to learn from the other. We are sure that we have much to gain from the, the, the West, and that we are uh, expanding our own musical vocabulary through this contact. But in the main, what we hope to do is to reach back to our past, to preserve it, to use it as a foundation on which to build, because it's been truly said that the man that hath no past has no future. A bridge is being built between Africa and the United States, not of concrete and steel, but of music. <laughs> Professor Shawande has assembled a priceless collection of Nigerian folk music on tape. He has made many trips deep into the Nigerian bush with his tape machine often recording a song from the last living person who knew it. A special workshop in African music was set up for graduate students and teachers by the music department of Howard University in Washington, D.C. It's conducted by a team of African music experts led by Chief Shawande. Sacred music supplies the groundwork on which secular music is started, but secular music helps to develop sacred music because secular music just will not pay any attention to any sort of rules at the start. It will use any note that it wants to use without worrying whether it's the correct thing to do or not. And then later, it keeps those new notes that are good and drops those that are not so good. In its turn, then, it eventually helps to broaden sacred music. living on one another's doorsteps, we find a, a new medium in which communication across uh, racial and geographical barriers becomes possible. That's not the only thing that has uh, happened as the result of the mingling of these two cultures, because Af African musicians have, who have had uh, academic training are now reaching back onto their own traditional music for melodies or melodic and rhythmic patterns 
and are seeking to combine these with Western forms and Western techniques. about Phyllis Aranda at all, not even how to say his name properly. Um, so this, um, being a member of this choir has really enlightened me. Love brings hope, love brings longing, love brings life, love brings hope, love brings nurture. I'm quite a passionate person, but when I really know what the song means as well, I feel that I've got to pass on that story um, singing makes me feel so exhilarated and happy. It brings a joy to my life, to my heart. And um, I know we don't mention it much, but as a Christian, I also feel that I'm, I'm bringing something to somebody else when I sing. The warm-up exercises that we do, we can really, I can see the, the growth in, the vo in my voice. And, and also, singing in harmony as well with other group members as well. You're listening to what they're doing and it can it has influenced the way that I'm singing. And it's been a really creative journey. The black, the brown, the red, white and blue. Black, brown, red, white and blue. In my own personal experiences, I just like to listen to music of different cultures. Looking at what uh, Phyllis Joando did all those um, years ago, it makes it urgent just to just to be open and to reach out to new cultural offerings that we have in abundance in a city like London. easy to think that we're just like a black choir and that is really important that is a really strong part of our identity but we're also from so many different places in Africa and the Caribbean I think it's a really positive thing great thing about this choir is that everybody is from all over the world but at the same time we all have this like one thing in common which is really enjoying this music although I have been studying classical music for a very long time from a young age um, it's always been uh, kind of Western white world as opposed to an African classical music world. So it's been great for me to learn about something new. The music, join us as we play and make a merry noise of laughter as sweet as the day. And also to be performing something that I'd never really thought I would be performing. It's very different from anything I've done before. I've really enjoyed the, the songs in Yoruba. They're really nice, they're really beautiful. The sun is in the sky and It was an eye-opener, learning about fellow Shawande himself, other composers, and it helped to build our voices into the same thing as well. So the experience has been absolutely fantastic, absolutely. So it's been brilliant. <laughs> Lastly, those of you who can write music but cannot compose can still do very valuable work by collecting and writing down as many of our tunes as possible so that they may not be altogether lost to us.
time has come for me to say not goodbye, but au revoir. Obangi ji wolo to si i wola wa bojule. Obangi ji wolo to si i wola wa bojule. La yon fe, jo wo ye she wa la yon fe, kale si yon titi la do kwi.